Well, hello there. Uh, my name is Father Louis Olive. I uh, am originally from St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands, where it's beautiful during January, February, and March. Uh, but I've been a priest for uh, 48 years, mm. and uh, we come from a family of 16 children. So my father married twice. Uh, so uh, I was 14 years old, and we how I got my vocation, I told uh, some Protestant ministers the other night, it wasn't like St. Paul dramatic or anything. I guess we were a very religious family. Uh, we went to church and prayed the rosary, and one day I was up in church helping Father Ralph Enos and we were coming down the steps and he said to me, what are you going to be when you grow up? And I said to him, I want to be one like you. And really that was the beginning in my vocation because uh, the Redemptorist priests were the only ones in St. Thomas and the Sisters of Charity from Convent Station. So we were very close to the nuns and priests. And he must have taken me seriously because uh, within two weeks he had a suitcase in my mother's room, mm -hmm. in my mother's house, and we were packing and getting mm -hmm. ready uh, to go to uh, northeast mm -hmm. Pennsylvania and uh, in the beginning it was very very hard for me because mm -hmm. coming from a little village and I think we had 200 uh, fellows at Northeast mm -hmm. when I went up there mm -hmm. so breaking into that whole group was was hard and mm -hmm. and I left beautiful warm weather in St. Thomas and came up here. It was freezing, so. <laughs> but uh, uh, the question of homesickness mm -hmm. came up, you know, and, and I said, I think I was homesick for one day. Mm -hmm. And I sat on the, under a tree and I bawled for a couple hours, but that was uh, the end of it for me. Mm -hmm. You know, that was, very blessed. We were the only priests at that time in the Virgin Islands. Mm. So it was easy for me to become a Redemptorist. And I worked in St. Thomas and at St. Peter and Paul Church mm -hmm. and at St. Croix. I was both in St. Patrick's and Holy Cross Catholic Church there. So it was really good to to be down there and close to my parents, mm -hmm. and uh, just just to say a little a little incident about I remember one of our fellows had been down in Brazil mm -hmm. for 25 years, and he hadn't seen his parents in 25 mm -hmm. years. So I usually go down there, and I would be available to cover. Mm -hmm. So he said to me uh, one Christmas. Can you cover for me? I'd like to get home. Mm -hmm. And I was able to do that. And it was really good mm -hmm. uh, for him to be able to get home to see his parents, yeah. you know. Yeah. But up here, God, I think I've been in almost every place. Mm -hmm. I think I, I started off in Canon Dagua, mm -hmm. which is our retreat house. Then we went to Lima, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Lancaster, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. uh, uh, up in the Poconos, mm -hmm. and now I'm here in Annapolis, but I've been pretty much over the place. The only place I haven't been in is Philadelphia mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Baltimore, mm -hmm. but who knows about the future. <laughs> but you know, it's it's interesting how the Lord directs you in certain ways. Like 48 years after my ordination, I feel a great 
have wanting to work with a lot of ecumenism, to work with non-Catholics, and we uh, and to work in the in the past uh, the past few weeks. I've been able to work with the Christians in Bethlehem and, and we're trying to get them to form a nation mm. because the situation over there is so terrible. Mm. But that's going to take a lot of time mm -hmm. and patience. But the just this past Sunday I gave a talk to about 40 men from the Calvary Methodist Church, and they were they were tremendous, you know, and and it was just uh, a lot of simple questions, mm -hmm. as if uh, they're trying to open doors mm -hmm. and get people to talk with them. But the uh, I stopped saying mass publicly here and mm -hmm. saying St. Mary's because of my diabetes. Mm -hmm. But I've, I've been going down to Huntingtown, mm -hmm. Maryland, and helping out the pastor there. Mm -hmm. And last Lent, I heard so many confessions. I didn't want to hear another confession. The best part of it was we said a Mass at 6.30 mm -hmm. every day for the teenagers. Mm -hmm hundred teenagers and all we give them was a cup of coffee and some yogurt so that they could make their bus uh -huh. for school mm -hmm. but you know you mentioned about if I could tie in vocation here mm -hmm. the work is so varied I still think it's the people uh, the people Oh, what the Redemptorists are all about. I remember when I was down in the Virgin Islands, mm -hmm. when I was young, the priests used to mix in so much with the people. Mm -hmm. And the old ladies used to wear a special type of hats. And the priests used to take the hats off them and uh, wear them, you know. And the people were just, the priests were just in with the people. And I, I think we've, because of the bigness of our parishes, mm -hmm. somehow we've gotten a little away from the people. But, mm -hmm. but the Redemptorists are, are all about bringing the good news. Mm -hmm. And I, I traveled to Jerusalem and recently to Turkey and Greece, and I've read a lot of the, uh, of the Gospels mm -hmm. and St. Paul's letters. And the fact is that we have the good news, mm -hmm. and it's up to us to spread that good news. And I never realized it more than when I did St. Paul and the Gospel, that Jesus is the person we have to get make known.